Hello, I'm Chetan, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Sydney. Today, I'm going to show you how you can troubleshoot OIDC provider and IRSA related issues in Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service. Let's get started. The first step is to check to see whether you have an existing AWS identity and access management OIDC provider for your Amazon EKS cluster. There are two ways to do this. We'll look at both. The first way from the console, after logging into the AWS management console, navigate to the EKS console. Then select the EKS cluster name to load the cluster information. On the cluster information page, select configuration tab. Under the configuration tab, select the details tab. In the details section of the cluster, you can see the open ID connect provider URL. The last part of the URL is the ID of the provider. Next, navigate to the IAM console. Then in the navigation pane, under access management, select identity providers. Enter the ID from the OIDC provider URL in the filter section and press enter. If you see the ID provider listed, then you have a provider for your cluster. The second way is from the AWS command line interface. Open a terminal on a machine that has AWS command line interface installed and the credentials configured. Run the command to check your cluster's OIDC provider URL. From the output of this command, we can see the ID of your provider. Copy the ID part from the URL. Run the command to list the IAM OIDC providers in your account. If you have a provider for your cluster, then you'll see the ARN of the provider in the command output. If you don't see any output, then an IAM OIDC provider must be created. The second step is to check that your IAM role has the required IAM policy attached with necessary permissions. Log into the AWS Management Console and navigate to the IAM Console. Then in the navigation pane, select Roles. Search for the IAM role that is associated with the service account in the Kubernetes cluster. Choose the role to open the role information. Under Permissions tab, verify that the correct policy is attached to the role. Expand the policy and verify that the correct permissions are configured in the policy. Next, go to the Trust Relationships tab. Verify that the format of your policy is correct. Here's an example policy that has a service account scoped role. We can check the same from the command line using the AWS CLI. Run the command to access the IAM role. In the output of the command, Check the Assume Role Policy Document section and make sure that the format matches the example JSON policy. Step number three here is to check that your service account is created and correctly configured. On a machine that has access to the EKS cluster Kubernetes resources, open a command terminal. In the terminal, enter the command. In the output, you'll see the service accounts in the provided namespace. Verify that your service account is listed. If it's not listed, then you must configure a service account for the pods. Next, we'll verify that the service account has the IAM role configured in the annotation. We'll describe the service account by running the command. If the service account is correctly configured, then you'll see the IAM role specified in the annotation. The next step is to verify that you have specified the service account name in the application pod and the pod has correct environment variables set. To verify that the pod is configured with the correct service account, in the terminal, enter the command. If the output of the command doesn't list the correct service account name, then you must configure it in the pod specification. To verify that the pod has the correct environment variables set, in the terminal, enter the command. If the pod has access to the correct IAM role, then you'll see the AWS role ARN and the AWS web identity token file environment variables in the output. Sometimes containers in the pod can be run with a non-root user. As a result, the web identity token file might not be accessible by the non-root user. Run the command to be sure that the containers are run as root. Here's an example output for a pod running as root. Here's an example output for a pod running as non-root. If the pod was created before applying the IRSA, then you must recreate the pods. If the OIDC provider is incorrectly configured, then you might get this error. 
This happens if the audience in the IAM identity provider for your cluster isn't set to sts.amazonaws.com. Let's see how we can check this from the command line. Run the command to check the IAM identity provider for your cluster. The client ID list should be sts.amazonaws.com. Here's an example of wrongly configured audience. To check this from the console, log into the AWS management console and navigate to the IAM console. Under the navigation pane, select identity providers. Choose the identity provider for your EKS cluster. In the audiences section, you'll see sts.amazonaws.com. If the thumbprint in the IAM identity provider for your cluster is incorrectly configured, then you'll see an error like this. Thumbprint is the hex encoded SHA-1 hash value of the X509 certificate used by the domain where the OIDC provider makes its keys available. If the IAM identity provider is created using EKCTL or the AWS management console, then it's automatically configured for you. Lastly, to use IAM role for service account in the AWS China region, an additional environment variable, AWS default region, is required in the pod. If this isn't configured, then you'll see an error like this. Here's an example pod specification for the AWS default region environment variable for your reference. So now you know what to check for when troubleshooting issues related to your OIDC provider and the IAM role for service account. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.